Welcome to God Loves the LGBTQ Plus Community. I'm Pastor Chester Hitchcock, and in this video, I want to explain how the LGBTQ community can find hope in the creation story. But before we get to that explanation, let me remind you to hit that subscribe button anytime during the video if you like what you see and you want to see more. And don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment for me in the comment section. So let's get to the creation story. A statement that is often used by those who want to convince the gay community that the Bible opposes homosexuality from the very beginning is God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. To be honest, it sounds good. It makes sense. I have to admit I'm guilty of using it myself in the past. God didn't create mankind as a same-sex couple, therefore it must be against God's plan and will for mankind. Simple as that. Right? Sometimes we need a simple answer. But is this one of those situations? However, I would like for you to consider if this statement can truly be applied by looking at a few other points about creation. But let's begin with a simple everyday situation. Let's say perhaps that your ceiling light needs to be replaced and you would like to replace it with a light fan combination. You're not an electrician, but you've replaced a light switch or an outlet once or twice and you know enough about electricity to turn off the breaker before you begin. You know that the black wire is hot and the white wire is neutral and the bare or green wire is ground. Good! So you turn off the breaker and then you test the light to be certain that you've turned off the correct breaker. And you remove the fixture. Good so far? Then you get the new light fan assembly and you begin connecting wires and suddenly you realize that there are more than three wires. In fact, there is a red one and there's a wire with a stripe. What are you going to do? Well, perhaps you should just go with what you know. Hook the black to the black and the white to the white and connect the ground wire simply ignoring all of the other wires that you know nothing about. Do you think that your light and fan are going to work when you throw the breaker? I've got news for you, it won't. If you are not willing to read the directions, you're not going to get it hooked up correctly. There's another example of simple, right? My friends, the Bible is an amazing book that tells us about God. It tells us about ourselves. It tells us about others. And there are wonderful things that we can learn about all of these things and more if we are willing to read and study the Bible deeper than just looking for the simple things. But I can assure you that human beings and the God who created us has far more variations than a ceiling, fan, and light combo. While some people learn basic electrical skills and others study to become electricians and others even become electronic engineers, electronic engineers might design robotics that can work on assembly lines and electricians wire houses and the rest of us handyman people, well, we know simple things about electricity and we succeed in doing simple electrical repairs around the home. When it comes to the Bible, there are those who are not interested in it at all, and there are those who grew up in the church and have a basic knowledge that comes from weekly church services and possibly even daily devotionals that were written by someone else, and there are those who have a sort of a career center training that gets them deeper into the knowledge of Scripture, and then there are those who invest their entire lives into studying God's Word and getting an education to learn the biblical languages, etc., to enable them to study even deeper and to explain things to others. I would suggest that the statement, God created Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve, is similar to don't you just hook the black wire to the black wire and the white wire to the white wire and hook up the ground? Totally unaware that some electrical items have far more wires. Totally unaware that basic wiring is insufficient when it comes to certain things. Unfortunately, many Christians are more willing to accept the fact that they don't know everything about electricity than they are to accept that they don't know everything about the Bible 
or that what they believe to be simple and obvious is not quite as simple as they might think. So for a minute, let's go back to the beginning of creation and reconsider what we know and what we don't know. In Genesis chapters 1 and 2, we find the creation story, the Garden of Eden. Everything was perfect and good and void of sin. And when we get to chapter 3, we find the story of the fall into sin and Adam and Eve being expelled from the Garden of Eden. By the way, the word Eden actually means delight. In the New Testament, particularly in the four accounts of the Gospel, we find the story of the first coming of Jesus, and we find the story of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, by which he restores us, that is, mankind, spiritually to an Edenic state. For example, in Christ we already are holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. We are spiritually a delight in God's eyes. The New Testament also foretells of the second coming of Jesus when God will restore us physically to an Edenic state, where we will truly be holy and blameless and irreproachable in His sight. In other words, we will totally be a delight. Therefore, how we understand or view Genesis chapters 1 and 2, the Garden of Eden and creation, can have a big effect on our view of eternity. Is Genesis chapters 1 and 2 a model of how we should live our lives and how we will live our lives throughout eternity? Or is Genesis chapters 1 and 2 simply a very brief record of our beginning? God's creation of life on earth. If it is a brief record of our beginning, what can we surmise life would have been like if sin had never happened? Would the entire earth eventually been like the Garden of Eden? What would mankind's occupation be if sin had not happened? What would family life be like if Eden is also our model of what we should follow? What could we surmise life would be like without sin? Should all men be gardeners, modeled after Adam? Should all women have babies, just like Eve? Should all people get married? And would be being single, would that be actually incomplete? Should all marriages produce babies because God said be fruitful and multiply? Would failing to have babies not be living up to God's command that he gave in the Garden of Eden to be fruitful and multiply? Do you see how we have to be careful how we use Genesis chapter 1 and 2 in the creation story as our model? Clearly, the first couple had to be a man and a woman in order to be fruitful and multiply. But if... Eden is a model that we should follow, would it be wrong for any marriage to choose to not have babies? If the Garden of Eden is only a brief record of our beginning, can we use the story to put limitations on what the future earth without sin would have looked like, or for that matter, eternity? Can we use it to describe our living situations and occupations and family structures in the world to come? If the Garden of Eden is only a model, or even partly our model, what limitations can we put on heaven or eternity? Will there be single people there? Jesus was single. Paul actually encouraged people to be single, even though Genesis chapter 1 says that it was not good that man should be alone. Will there be scientists in heaven? Will there be builders in heaven? Will there be artists or, or musicians? None of these occupations were given to Adam in the Garden of Eden, nor are they even mentioned for future generations. If the Garden of Eden is only a record, not a model, that we should follow, if Adam and Eve prior to sin cannot be an adequate model in all things, how can they be a model in anything? And if Adam and Eve are not our models, 
that we should follow who, pray tell, is? Well, Jesus Christ, of course. He is our model. He is the one that we should follow. You see, when a baby is born, we experience a delight. Remember, Eden means delight. It was a beginning. It was a new creation. And when a baby is born, we feel that everything is good. In fact, the New Testament says to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again. But does that mean that we need to return to that as our model? Does that mean that we need to be limited to the restrictions of childhood? Are we under the same demands and requirements? And does it mean that we need to adhere to the physical model of an infant? Or is infancy and childhood simply the first stages of God's plan for us? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Here is another aspect of this reasoning. Sin did not give mankind the joy of more fields of occupation than Adam had. Sin did not give us that pleasure. Sin did not give women the joy of independence, as some in the past have thought that Eve's first mistake was that of leaving Adam's side. Do you mean to tell me that Eve was not allowed to walk with God alone? Of course they had independence. Of course they could walk in the garden alone. Sin didn't give us the joy of inventing things and enjoying travel and building ships and building cities. These things are not mentioned in the creation story, but that doesn't mean that that was not part of God's plan. If anything, sin prevents us from enjoying variety to its fullest. Sin prevented us in the past from accepting and enjoying variations within the human family, considering people of different color and nationality less than human, and it still goes on today, of looking down on people because of different shapes and sizes. There are lots of things that God has given us to enjoy that are not mentioned in the Garden of Eden. Consider the penguin, for example. The creation story about the Garden of Eden says, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the firmament of heavens. Penguins are birds. They have wings, but they don't fly. In fact, they spend most of their time swimming. What, what day does Genesis tell us that God created these animals? Therefore, the creation story is a brief record of our beginning without including everything. And what about the ostrich or the emu? These are birds with wings and they don't fly. Just because the creation story does not record the existence of such animals doesn't mean that God didn't design them and create them. And what about the amphibians? What about frogs and newts and things like that? They spend part of their time in water and part of their time on land. And there's nothing mentioned in the creation story about them. In the story of Noah's Ark, God had Noah to bring two of certain kinds of animals. For example, there were only two dogs, from which we now have thousands of different breeds of dogs. Do we enjoy those different breeds because of sin? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the creation story is proof that God intended for there to be same-sex relationships. What I am saying is that the creation story about Adam and Eve cannot be used as proof that God didn't. As much as some people still want to hold on to the Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve slur against the gay community, the Bible does not work that way. Electricity doesn't work the way all home repair people think that it does. 
And if there is more to electricity that God provides that mankind has learned to use by more skilled and educated electricians and engineers, I can guarantee you the Bible is far more enlightening, far more powerful, far more versatile than the average Christian knows. But it is available if they are willing to do the research and study and open their eyes to the light. God created Adam and Eve. It goes without reason that it took a man and a woman to procreate and have children. God said, it is not good that man should be alone. So he created Eve and commanded them, be fruitful and multiply. Yet Paul advised people to be single in the New Testament, and Jesus himself was single. They were not going against the creation story just because they didn't follow it in every aspect of life. All of this tells us that the creation story was not intended as a model for us to follow. If it was, we would not be able to pick and choose what part to follow as a model and what part we didn't. All men would have to be gardeners, all women would have to have babies, and all birds would have to fly. Well-intentioned. But unskilled Christians have coined a phrase that sounds biblical but isn't found in the Bible. And frankly, it falls short of reflecting the story about the Garden of Eden and what it really teaches. The phrase that has been coined by unskilled Christians is, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. The problem with these kinds of catchy, pious phrases is that they are more dangerous than hooking up an electrical item incorrectly due to a lack of understanding electricity. Unfortunately, these kinds of biblical, or perhaps I should say unbiblical, mistakes are extremely hurtful and life-threatening to fellow human beings who are created in God's image. Be careful what phrases you repeat. Just because you heard it in church doesn't make it right. If this video has been helpful to you, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and choose all to make sure that you get a notification the next time that a video is produced. And don't forget to hit that like button. I love you all. And God loves you all the more. I'll see you in the next video.